what we are actually doing here with the Swiss commercial is um, something quite big. The big project uh, came up, I think, four months ago. Uh, we asked ourselves how to position Swiss as a premium airline on a worldwide base. And maybe you know it, we are a small airline. And the question is, in this big competition, how to be a little bit noisy in the market and do something different than the other ones? Well, we, we had the choice. Let's do a classical advertising thing, like shooting a commercial and bringing it into the media. Or we had this opportunity together with uh, Mark Forster doing this project. I said, you know, what about off the bond? Can we do something? You have like maybe a slot? And I said, well, maybe in January we could do something. I said, well, you know, maybe we should just come up with something completely different. Why don't you just like come with an idea? I got a text message from Mark, you know, like very, very short. You know, so he's very brief, right? He goes like, uh, I think I have a story. I'm like, okay, great. So I call him up, so what's the story? He's like, yeah, you know, just just go talk to them first. And then there was a moment when I went to the agency, I read them what Mark had written. And I was sitting there and I was thinking like, you know, it's very personal and, you know, in a commercial world, this might not work. But then they said, hey, uh, we have goosebumps. A very individual view of his flight. He does uh, several times a year from uh, Zurich to Los Angeles. He shares a lot of the same values that Swiss has. Swiss um, also wanted to give a platform to a creative person to express his individuality. And he's now the direct director of our film. So we are well aware that it should be premium, premium standard, which is well fitting. They gave me the opportunity to sort of create a, like a, a little short story, short film. One of the last moments where uh, you know, you're sort of cut off from the world and you feel like sort of in your own headspace is on the plane. Because uh, so, ma so often life you're so ca caught up in on the phone or blackberries or work that like on a plane you're sort of like in your own world and gives you that moment to think it's sort of like a little short where where my mind wanders to and and what comes to you and what kind of ideas uh, you know float in float in, in space and, and in sort of your consciousness and uh, and that's what the little piece is really about and dolly action don't you wish you could fly i do this is a swiss air first class First class chair. It's a very nice, nice Swiss air chair. It looks comfortable. Yeah, honestly, I would take that at home. If I could get two of those and a couch version. You never have to leave. You got your table. Yeah, right exactly. There. You've got your television. If they made a camper version of that. You can yeah, drive it around. Exactly. Is, is there a motorhome version of this? <laughs> it's very difficult, especially with a green screen, to have a crew sort of understand how all this stuff pieces together. Um, but, you know, that's where we come in to make sure that all these different pieces that we're shooting work together as a whole. <laughs> to have this kind of, uh, like, that's not on the board, but I think I, I definitely at one point need to figure out where we how to get that in. How we can get that in. What? I would be independently wealthy, it probably wouldn't work much. <laughs> no. It, it's really, I started making movies yeah. when really nobody would help me anymore when I was literally on the street. I've seen Mark today the first time on set and the way he worked with these actors was just amazing. Love is the only answer. What do you want to become when you grow up? Firefighter. A firefighter? And wh where are you from? I'm from Cleveland. Okay. And what part of town do you live? The city of Allison. Oh, cool. I have three older brothers. Oh my god, that's, you're the youngest. Yeah, I was the youngest too. Yeah, so we're not just doing a you know, 30 or 60 yeah. second commercial. We're doing a lot of additional elements that lead up to the launch of the main piece. This film will be nearly two minutes long. So from a media buy perspective, it would be too expensive to put the whole thing on air. We're doing a whole viral campaign before where we're creating conversation around Mark Forster, but he's working on sort of a secret project. So in that period, before we officially release that this is a film for Swiss, we need to keep Swiss out of the conversation. And so internally, at the agency and at the client and everybody involved in the production, we don't want people to kind of know that it's a Mark Forster and Swiss thing. So we have a coach, Bob. 
we wanted to get something else interesting visually that could be spread uh, around the web. So we folded, I think, uh, close to 5,000 paper planes <laughs> that um, were putting out on the whole stage. Conceptually, it's interesting, Mark, as the ambassador for Swiss is initiating uh, this whole thought and then everybody else can uh, participate. And hopefully, the, you know, this will also have a uh, symbolic gesture. Yeah. These airplanes are just one of the things we're doing for viral. It's linked to flying, but it's not obvious that this is for an airline. But it's got cues that later on, when we reveal it, Swiss, all the things that we've done up to this point People will go, oh, okay, I get the connection. One story is that uh, people here in Hollywood are trying to learn Swiss German, so that they're hired by Mark Foster because uh, he likes to sometimes speak Swiss German on his sets. And so we created the book, uh, How to Learn Swiss German, and we uh, gave that to uh, some of the people here on the set, and they're learning Swiss German now and hopefully that will uh, be picked up by the news. Maybe all, all of Hollywood soon is going to speak in Swiss German <laughs> or not. <laughs> Maybe we are now the first ones on the worldwide base who arrange something new in terms of communication and building up maybe a new field of communication content. We will see, but I think we are to totally convinced that is the right way to go. The time has come to slow down to find a way back to the basics, so we can discover the days again which could last forever. All one can do is to take responsibility for making even one thing in our day-to-day -day lives better than how we found it. It's the path back to remembering why we started this journey, like the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. Don't you wish you could fly? I do. Play one again with four. Just one more time. Here's the two. Don't you wish you could fly? I do. Do you think take one? Don't you wish you could fly? <laughs> Jillian? I do. Jillian? I see it. Okay, come out. Okay, that's, this is take one, huh? Reach take one. Don't you wish you could fly? I do. And then you rest for a second. Then you get to take it. four. Don't you wish you could fly? I do. It feels like you're almost waiting for the line to finish. I like one better than one. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely four. I like one better than four. Do you want as well? I'm one, yeah. Sasha? No, I always like one. I'm so, yeah. Uh, yeah, one. That one's good with me. But if we're matching you guys, German one. mouths, I'll go <laughs> either way. What? Close to doing too much. And then let's watch it again. We started collaborating with Mark uh, with Stranger Than Fiction. Uh, we did the, the film titles and uh, a lot of the visual effects uh, that kind of showcases the main character's uh, OCD-esque tics. Conceptually, a uh, similar construct uh, to showcasing what's just going on within that character's mind uh, as the, the Swiss piece, actually. Um, but from there, we, uh, we, we've, we've done uh, the film titles for his film, uh, The Kite Runner, as well as Quantum of Solace. And we did a bunch of uh, graphic work within uh, the Bond film as well. Uh, the way that we're set up as a company is we're a collective of nine designers and filmmakers. We work more or less communally, so everybody takes a little bit and a little piece of it. So we're here directing the creative side of this, but then at the same time we'll be the guys going back and doing some of the actual work as well. Um, and that'll be divided up evenly amongst different artists of the studio. Everybody's welcome to contribute and everybody's welcome to pitch in ideas and uh, just through the, the strength of the group I think is where uh, we really find the core of the piece that we're working on. Yeah, it's an organic process. That's good, that was really good. <laughs> we're, we're just up day and night working on this. It's a very quick uh, post-production schedule. We've just been slowly building a, a, an interesting kind of abstract story narrative that kind of plays off of the emotional tone and, uh, you know, certain devices within the script. Uh, trying to visualize what Mark is, uh, you know, trying to say. The mountainscape for us is our way of, of visually illustrating Mark's inner mind space, if you will. I mean, the piece, uh, the piece that we're working on is a very personal piece of writing for Mark, so what we try to do is figure out a, um, an interesting visual way of illustrating that. So we settled on this uh, this mountainscape, which in a way doubles for the Swiss Alps, which we thought was appropriate. So we, we're starting out the piece with this fairly dry 
bland uh, mountainscape that's made up entirely of, of just black and white outlines. Adding in a little bit of atmospherics and stuff like that, but for the most part it's a blank canvas. And then towards the end of the piece, we start to add in a little bit more color. They still take on, they still have the same shape uh, and overall geometry as the, uh, as the original mountains, but in this, uh, this time when we return to them, they've got a little bit more life and a little bit more vibrancy to them. Like the caterpillar becomes the butterfly. Don't you wish you could fly? I do.